What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm back with another health related video, although we're not really going to be going into detail about my current nightmare that has been going on for um, two weeks now. So if you're coming to this, this channel for the first time uh, because of the title of this video, I will tell you I've been sick and in the hospital for in and out of the hospital for the last two weeks. Uh, so a quick update on that. Uh, today is the best I've felt in, 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 a two, in this, any point in this two week period. I've been getting hydrated. I've been getting lots of food into my system. Well, not lots, but I'm, I'm eating as, as much as I can. I'm actually force feeding right now because I, during this illness period, and really over the course of the last five days, my weight dropped from 211 pounds. I was at a high of 214.2 when I got sick. When I went to the hospital the first time, I dropped down to 211, and this morning I woke up at 197, which is the, the lowest I've been in, in some time now. Um, obviously, again, with this rapid weight loss, it, it's not all tissue, but I have been in a massive calorie deficit, and I am definitely feeling the effects of that. Thankfully, I apparently did not have pneumonia. Uh, I feel like I could go to the gym right now if it wasn't for the fact that I've just been in such a, a massive deficit for so long. Today what we're going to be talking about actually is more, uh, again, sidestepping my current illness, what my actual long-term health looks like after having, you know, some might argue abused steroids for a period of five years. Again, if you're new to this channel, I run Trimblone in some dose, uh, anywhere, usually about 100 milligrams a week at a minimum. Uh, year round at this point and have been doing that for give or take the last two years. Uh, I ran trend at 50 milligrams a week with two blasts during a one year period and then for the past like 10 or 11 months I've been running it at a minimum of 100 milligrams with at least one blast mixed into there. So if you you know if you, you get to know my channel you'll know that uh, I, I I, I run steroids in a, in a very atypical fashion. I cruise on high doses and I don't ever come off. So over the course of the last four years, I have been beaten half to death in the comment section about all of the damage that the trend is certainly doing to my body. Uh, people are constantly talking about left ventricular hypertrophy. They're con constantly talking about me damaging my liver, my kidneys. Uh, basically, you know, uh, um, neurotoxicity, pretty much any of the bro science, any of the fear mongering bullshit that you've ever heard in the bodybuilding world or, or related to steroids in any way, I have to fend off these, these accusations on a daily basis on this channel. And so while I'm not happy that I got sick, I am happy that I have some really interesting data to share with you to put, I think, uh, I think this should put all of those concerns at rest and for those of you who have been kind of tentatively following my lead and you know a running low dose trend for long periods of time or are, are cruising on high doses anybody who's been following this channel for for uh, any length of time and has modeled any of my uh, my cycles will have something to gain from this knowledge I am 43 years old so I'm not a young man and I, I, I use you know up to two grams of gear per week at a time. What we're going to be going over today is what my chest x-ray and a CT scan of my heart, all of the vein, I don't know all the names, the aorta, all of the veins and valves and whatever comes from the heart, um, my gallbladder, my kidneys, my liver, my... Um, I can't remember everything that's even on here. It, basically, they did a CT scan um, of my chest cavity. Excuse me. They did a um, yeah. They did a CT scan of my chest cavity. They did an X-ray of my chest cavity, and then they did a sonogram of all of my vital organs. So that's what we're going to be going over today, because the other thing that people co commonly talk about in the bodybuilding world is uh, not only left ventricular hypertrophy or, or, or growth of the heart but they talk about general organ growth. Uh, a lot of the bodybuilders who have succumbed to various different maladies, uh, who have died, um, Dallas McCarver stands out in mind, uh, when these bodybuilders have been autopsied, they have had acromegaly or, or unusually large organs generally throughout the body. 
and this is a sign of growth hormone uh, abuse and any number of other things. So because I've used the vast majority of anabolics on the planet, not EQ, and because I've used growth hormone for extended periods of time uh, in minor doses up to four I use, but I've been running growth hormone on and off for about three years now. Uh, hopefully this data again will, will put all of you to rest and put this topic as to what kind of damage I've actually been doing to my body to rest uh, once and for all. So when I reported to the ER, I had some type of viral infection and uh, my, my original blood work was really, was really not bad. The only extreme elevations were, or not extreme, but my, my AST was like 125 and my ALT I believe was 155. Nothing that you wouldn't expect to see on blood work um, from somebody who was experienced, who had a, a serious viral infection. I'd been dehydrated for days, I'd been not eating for days and generally feeling like death. During, when, when I reported to the hospital, I had been on cycle for greater than 16 weeks. Um, I was running Trinbolone at 125 milligrams per week, DECA at 200 milligrams per week, Masteron at 400 milligrams per week, testosterone at f uh, 500 milligrams per week, and that was accompanied by um, f uh, f uh, a milligram, uh, about a milligram and a quarter of cabergoline and uh, three and a half to four milligrams of ADEX per week. So not a small amount of androgens by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, I was also running MK677 at 20 milligrams per day and Proviron at 50 milligrams per day dosed in two 25 milligram doses. So um, right out the gate, having an ALT, AST level um, at 125, 155, with that amount of gear in my system and having been on blast for greater than 16 weeks, I think I was at the 18 week mark and had been training very heavily and had put on uh, 15 pounds of body weight in a relatively short period of time, I was definitely hitting it very hard. And so for the fact that I checked in and those were the only real extreme um, uh, you know, changes in my blood work uh, says a lot in and of itself. They suspected that I might have pneumonia, which is what they were looking for, or they were looking for some type of bacterial infection. On this chest chest x-ray that I'm going to be going over, uh, the indication on the chest x-ray um, was for sepsis. So they were basically looking for any type of bacterial condition anywhere in my body, but they did a chest x-ray. Uh, and they the findings on the chest x-ray uh, state normal heart size, clear lungs, no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Uh, I should have researched what pneumothorax uh, means. I did not do that. Uh, give me a second. I will tell you what pneumothorax means. Um, pneumothorax is a collection of air outside the lung, but within the pleural cavity. So I had no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. So my chest x-ray was perfectly normal. Um, this probably, along with the sound of my lungs, should have been enough for the doctor to confirm that I did not have pneumonia. Instead, uh, since they didn't find anything else, they just threw out a uh, diagnosis of predicted on oncoming pneumonia, whatever the fuck that means, and wrote me uh, uh, two, uh, an two um, antibiotics that have now landed me in some state of liver disease or possible liver failure. Um, so before I got to the hospital, I was in very, very good health. The next test we're gonna be going over, oops, hit the wrong button, um, is going to be, so they did the chest x-ray during my first uh, visit on April 21st. And then they did, um, again, another chest x-ray uh, I thought there was this, here's, uh, sorry, I'm, there's uh, so many tests. They ran troponin T, CK, uh, estimated glomular filtration rate. They looked for SARS-CoV, influenza A and B, uh, CBC panel. I mean, they did a ton of stuff. So here's the CT scan from my initial visit on April the 21st. These are the findings. The indication, the reason they pulled the CT scan was to look for a pulmonary embolism because my D-dimmer was elevated. 
Uh, D. Dimmer apparently is a sign that there could be a blood clot somewhere, and they were concerned that I might have a, pul a blood clot in my lung or, or pulmonary embolism, so they ordered a CT scan. It says, uh, you know, the CT scan was with dye. So it says CT chest after administration of 99 milliliters of Omnipaque 350 IV contrast per CT angiography pulmonary embolism protocol. Maximum, int maximum intensity projection images were created in the axial plane. Multiplanar reformatted images were provided. All CT scans at this facility use dose modulation, iterative reconstruction, and or weight-based dosing when appropriate to reduce radiation dose to as low as reasonably achievable. Findings. Adequate contrast bolus timing with greater opacification of the pulmonary arter arterial vasculature relative to systemic. No pulmonary embolism identified. Normal, normal caliber main pulmonary artery. RV to LV ratio is less than 0.9. Normal, calor, normal caliber cardiac chambers. No caliber a normal caliber aorta no thoracic aortic or coronary calcified plaque so a whole bunch of big words there to say that there was no pulmonary embolism my rv to lv ratio was slightly low i forget what the what they what they blamed that on but they didn't they didn't find it to be anything concerning normal uh the normal size of the cardiac chambers so uh, I believe that's to say no left ventricular hypertrophy. Both chambers of the heart were normal sized, normal sized aorta, uh, no, uh, no thoracic aortic or coronary calcified plaque. So no, um, no arteriosclerosis anywhere around my heart. Um, uh, central airways are patent, no acute airspace opacity, no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Base of the neck is unremarkable, no, adena, uh, no adenopathy. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, this was shocking as fuck to read. Remote appearing deformity or fracture of the T1, T11 spinuous process. Osseate, which means I have a broken back, effectively. There's a, a little point that comes off my T11 vertebrae, I think. There's a point on the back of each of, of your vertebrae, and apparently mine's broken. I have no idea how or when that happened. I talked to multiple doctors. I've talked to friends in the medical community. They say it's something I could have done at a much younger age, and it's just, I, I, I would think breaking part of your your vertebrae would be a memorable experience. I have no idea how or when that happened. Maybe it's not broken. It does say remote appearing deformity. So maybe there's some something bizarre shaped about my T11 spinuous process. It goes on to say osseous demineralization and or scattered hemangiomas throughout the thoracic spine. So apparently that means that I have uh, benign tumors in my in my spine uh, apparently this is not terribly uncommon and is very rarely a problem uh it's concerning to read obviously you don't want to know you don't i mean nobody wants to have a tumor anywhere uh but apparently they're benign and they they generally don't cause any problems uh and then it says and i wish i could actually see you know the scan obviously a ct scan is not like reading an x-ray where it's just two dimensions it's in multi dimensions and so they can't share the actual scan where I can kind of click through the different frames, but it says uh, mild, mild bilateral gynecomastia, which of course I knew I had. Uh, it was just interesting to see it come up on the CT scan. So again, to the point about my heart health, people have been beating me to death, telling me that 19 doors are, you know, are going to cause heart problems. The, you know, all of my high cholesterol, my uh, constant use of cabergoline was going to lead to left ventricular hypertrophy, and there is no indication of any of that anywhere on my CT chest pulm, uh, CT, CT, the, on the CTA of my chest. Um, so moving on from this, they did, um, again, I'm going to have to find along, bear with me, please. Um, okay, so they did the CT. When I reported back to the hospital on the 26th, 
They did another chest x-ray and again found the exact, the exact same thing, normal heart size, clear lungs, no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Then they ordered, uh, because they still couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, they ordered um, the uh, ultrasound of my abdomen. It's titled Ultrasound Abdomen Limited. So I'm going to read through this because it, gets, it goes it basically goes over all of my vital organs minus my brain, my heart they already looked at in the CT scan. They only did one of my kidneys. So I can't without I can't with 100% certainty say my left kidney is not somehow damaged because they didn't feel the need to look at it. For some reason they only scanned my right kidney. So it says uh, procedure ultrasound abdomen limited. The reason for doing the ultrasound is that I had ele elevated liver uh, liver enzymes and ALK phosphatase. Uh, the technique used ultrasound of the up of the right upper quadrant of the abdomen was performed utilizing grayscale and color Doppler techniques when needed. Findings: pancreas is unremarkable, noting portions of the head and body slash tail. Are obscured by bowel gas. Aorta and inferior vena cava are normal in caliber where visualized. Uh, liver is normal in size and demonstrates no, excuse me, and demonstrates a normal echo texture. No discrete liver lesions are seen. Main portal vein demonstrates normal hepatopedal flow. This may or may not end up being a really important finding because um, I am currently, uh, it, it is currently, I am, I am apparently suffering for currently from something called drug-induced liver injury. Um, this could be fatal. Um, it could result in, in me needing a uh, complete um, liver transplant, which is what they tried to scare me with in the hospital to get me to stay. I did not stay. Um, so basically what is currently being suspected is that the augmentin clovinate that they prescribed me for pneumonia I did not have caused drug induced liver injury. This is a condition that can actually get worse even after cessation of the drug. So I've been off the drug now for three days and over the course of the, 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 the two days following final admission of the drug, my AST levels continue to increase. Uh, excuse my my ALT level. So when I it was when, when I was admitted to the hospital on the 21st, my ALT level was 155. They gave me the augmentin clovinate, and that jacked my ALT level from 155 up to 495. They kept me overnight in the hospital, and they ran the check again, and my ALT level had climbed from 495. Excuse me, 465. Yeah, 495 to 765. Uh, which is more than a little terrifying to see. I have never allowed my my liver enzymes to get anywhere even remotely close to that. I didn't even know you could survive with liver enzymes that high. And that has, luckily I have plenty of data from previous blood work, previous x-rays. I had a CT scan and uh, I had this ultrasound done before the the whatever the cumulative effects of this augmentin are going to be to prove that there was nothing wrong with my liver when they first observed me. Um, they went on to find that the gallbladder contains sludge and stones without wall thickening or pericholocystic col fluid. Um, extra hepatic bile duct is normal in caliber, measuring three millimeters. Distal portion of the duct is obscured by bowel gas. There is no intrahepatic biliary dilation. Um, so they did find that there was gall sludge and some stones, which led the emergency room doctor to fucking cause me and half my family to have a panic attack when she said, Oh, you have gallstones. That's what's causing all of the problems. We're going to have you put on uh, another antibiotic and you're going to need to get your gallbladder removed laparoscopically sometime in the next four hours. Uh, I've mentioned this before, so I'm not going to beat this subject to, get, uh, to death again. She never should have made that claim. She had no idea what the fuck she was talking about. 
and thank God the surgery team came downstairs relatively rapidly uh, after she called them and reassured me that there was absolutely nothing wrong with my gallbladder, that those stones could have been there for fucking 20 years, that they could be there for the next 20 to 60 years and never cause any problems, or at any given time one of them could get stuck in, in a bile duct and I could have to have my gallbladder removed. But at, at, at the current time, I was not suffering from any type of gallbladder issue whatsoever. So that was one of the first really asinine things that happened at Baylor Scott and White was this woman told me I was going to have to have a organ removed for absolutely no good fucking reason. Uh, the right kidney is normal in size, measuring 11.9 centimeters. There is no hydro uh, nephrosis. There is no cortical thinning. Uh, echogenicity is normal, no shadowing, calculi are visualized. No acetites seen in the upper right abdomen. So I talked to three different doctors about this scan. They were all made aware of my history of andro androgen abuse. Um, and so I made it very clear that I wanted to confirm that despite whatever was currently happening with me, that I did in fact have a clear bill of health when I was admitted to the, to the ER or to the hospital minus whatever viral or bacterial uh, infection I was experiencing. The point being is that I wanted to get multiple people's opinion that nothing that I had done leading up to the, my admission at, at the ER had led to any abnormal changes in any of my major organs. And that is what all three doctors and everyone who's looked at this data since has confirmed. All of my vital organs are normal in size, they show no signs of dysfunction, stress, abnormalities, nothing. The only thing that was even remotely remarkable on any of these scans was the, <coughs> the gallbladder stones. So again, uh, something that is, that is very common and may or may not ever be any kind of an issue. So hopefully this will go a long way to... Uh, to, to bring me home the point that I've been trying to make really for almost four years now on this channel. The, 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 the fear and the, the fear mongering and the paranoia and the bro science and the misinformation in the medical community and in the general community about the dangers of anabolic steroids are very, very clearly overblown. Um, it is definitive to say that my uh, use slash abuse of anabolic steroids has not caused any deleterious effects to any of my vital organs. Now, maybe I have a massive brain tumor because that's the one thing that they did not check, despite the fact that I asked them to, to do a brain scan while they were in there because they couldn't seem to find any, any bacterial infections. And I thought, well, shit, maybe there's one in my brain. And they said that there was no, no grounds for doing a brain scan. So we can't rule out that uh, I don't have a demon, I guess, living inside of my brain responsible for all my <laughs> uh, outrageous behavior. But as much as you haters, you roid haters, want to blame the steroids for any medical condition that I've ever suffered, there is zero medical data to back up all of your fallacious claims. And so at this point on this channel, if I continue to see the haters making these fucking asinine, baseless claims, trying to perpetuate fear mongering in the community, I'm going to fucking mute you. My comment section will no longer be a place for sharing of misinformation. That my body has been scanned from every conceivable angle. They have run every fucking blood test you could run. They have looked at, at, at my anatomy in a million different ways over the past four years and there have been absolutely zero signs that any of the anabolic agents that I have taken have ever caused anything except the most transient of effects. And when I say transient, I mean if I take oxandrolone slash anivar, obviously that's going to elevate to some degree my AST, my AST ALT levels. Oxymethylone, any 17 alpha alkylated oral and some uh, methylated, um, methylated orals or I think there's one or two methylated injectables. 
actually not injectables. Uh, so the 17 alpha alkylated orals and some methylated orals can cause a temporary transient increase in AST ALT levels. Um, there is no signs of kidney damage. Uh, no signs of kidney dysfunction, despite the fact that one of the doctors initially tried to tell me that I had chronic, chronic kidney disease and then was unable to, to display that with any, with any other data. So um, uh, this is obviously the, the, the least ideal way of looking at the health of the human body. I would have loved to have been able to spend what they have now charged me is $12,000 to just go and, you know, when I was feeling perfectly healthy and normal, it would be great if I could have gone and got a CT scan and, and x-rays and sonograms and done all of these things to prove absent uh, some kind of illness that all of my internal organs were functioning perfectly normally. Um, I, I'm, I have a couple of bucks in my name, but, but not that many. So, um, unfortunately, it took me getting sick to the point that I thought I was going to die and... I guess if one of the doctors, Dr. Argyle, is correct, I still may. Um, uh, it took that happening, unfortunately, to get all of this uh, this work that you know, the, 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 all of these workups done. But I don't know. Uh, I don't. I haven't looked extensively on YouTube. Typically, on YouTube, when we see um, a bodybuilder talking about the effects of long term, you know, four years not long term, but. But of steroid abuse, typically they're they're telling you bad news. They're telling you that they do have kidney disease, or they have damaged their liver, or that their organs are uh, um, unnaturally large, or they do have left ventricular hypertrophy. And so, despite the fact that at 43, from from about 39 to 43, I have been abusing steroids in in remarkable fashion. Uh, there is again, finally, to put this to bed. Zero evidence of any actual chronic damage done to my body by any of these uh, drugs that I have taken. So there you have it. I just wanted to, to, to bring some positivity to light um, out of this ex extraordinarily negative experience that I've had. Um, we are still, uh, I should say, I shouldn't say we, uh, you guys know I'm ready to drop dead at any moment. My wife is not ready to, for me to drop dead at any moment. And she's very, very concerned about my health right now. Uh, this is honestly, um, this is honestly the most scared I have ever seen my wife in, 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 in my life with her in, uh, of nine years. And, um, it, it's, it's horrifying to watch really. Um, so Hopefully, tomorrow we get some 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 better um, some better news in my blood work. Um, I have been told by the doctors to be prepared uh, that the blood work is likely going to get worse before it gets better. I'm sure that's not going to be good for her to see, but it is unfortunately where we are at uh, with drug induced liver injury. Um, it, it's a condition that's that's scary because the damage has already been done. And so there's nothing really I can do to, con you know, my fate is sort of in God's hands or in the, in the matrix hands or, or whatever. It, it, it's the die has been cast. So whatever is going to come of my liver um, and my kidneys or whatever else has been affected by these drugs, uh, the, the augmenting clavinate is that die has been cast. And so all we're doing now is waiting to find out if, uh, damage was done, how much damage was done, and what, if anything, can be done over a period of time to repair that damage. And so I won't know what my bodybuilding life will look like or my life at all until we get more of that data. And as soon as I get that data, I will definitely make a video to update everyone uh, of that prognosis. So there you have it. Um, en enjoy your steroid cycles, guys. Don't let the, the fear mongers get to you. Don't let the haters get to you. Um, I have had the time of my life over the past four years running various compounds, guinea pigging my body, re pr producing all of this content to try to reduce uh, damage in the, in the community. And uh, I'm very happy to know that I have not injured myself in any way with all of the experiments that I've run. And it's good to know that I have not been giving bad information to anybody else that could have damaged their bodies because mine, uh, aside from whatever I recently contracted, is perfectly, perfectly healthy. So there you have it. As always, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.